Hi. All right, so today was story time with Trina Devery. We're going to be reading a folk tale. And this is a very, um, a very well known folk tale that is often told in different versions. It sometimes has different characters and sometimes it has diff a different setting. And sometimes it even has different events that lead to the same message. So we're going to take a look at Stone Soup. So this is Stone Soup by John Muth. And this is Stone Soup by Marsha Brown. This book is so old. So these are two different versions of Stone Soup. And we're going to take a look at them and we're going to compare them and contrast them because that's what we have been talking about for the past couple of days. And we did that with Goldilocks and the Three Bears and Goldilocks, yes, Goldilocks rocks. So if you want to check those out, check those other ones out. So the, and the first thing that we can do before we compare and contrast, like maybe, and I'm just me, I'm just making these standards based assessments digital because I have a whole pack that are not digital and, but I'm making them digital. So you can do this with your distance learning. And when we look at this, it actually breaks it down into exactly the criteria that the student needs. And it even has a space for students to add some of their own criteria, what they think it should be in order to get a three, which is what we want. A four is above and beyond. A two is they're getting there and they've got some of it, but they still have a little ways to go. And then a one is they're just starting to, to understand and that, and we have some more work to do in the standard. So in this case, when we're looking at point of view, because we'll just check out that first, you're going to talk about who narrates the story, just like we did yesterday. Who's telling the story? Pay close attention to the clues of who's telling the story. Is it the narrator? Is it told by a character? Who's telling? And then you're going to do, you're going to give specific details and even a page number of that shows the narrator's opinion with a clear description of the, of the narrator's point of view. How can you tell what the narrator's thinking? Because that's the next one. What page were you able to really see what the narrator was thinking? And maybe they're trying not to have an opinion, but there are some clues that show you that they do. And then you're gonna record the page number of the section of the text or an illustration can be an illustration as well that shows the narrator's point of view regarding an important event describe the point of view so that's what you're going to do in the next box and then the final one is how would things have been different if the story was told by a different character a different character's perspective or from your own point of view so you can either say it from a different character or from your own and then that would also shares how the point of view would be different from a different perspective and then in order to get a four, there's a little bit more of a criteria for a four, but that's for the what you're reaching for for the three. So um, I'm going to give this one away for free. So I will post this soon. And that's what we're going to focus on today is point of view. But I do want you to pay attention because tomorrow we're going to focus on comparing and contrasting events. So what are the same, what are different in the events from the story? All right, Stone Soup, John Muck. The pictures are absolutely beautiful. So I really hope that I do a better job of having you be able to see it. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, and Sue, traveled along a mountain road. They talked about cat whiskers, the color of the sun, and giving. What makes me, what makes one happy Sue? Asked Hawk, the youngest monk. Old Sue, who was the wisest, said, let's find out. Ah, a sticky note. That always means something. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of a village below. They could not see from high above that the village had been through many hard times. Famine, floods, and war had made the villagers weary and untrusting of strangers. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. Suspicious. Hmm. What does that mean? They're suspicious of their neighbors. The villagers worked hard, but only for themselves. There was a farmer, a tea merchant, a seamstress, a doctor, a carpenter, and many others. 
but they had little to do with one another. Hmm. Little to do with one another. So they look like maybe they're very concerned about just themselves. Interesting. Is that a perspective? When the monks reached the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gates to greet them. Well, that seems rude. And when the people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. Wonder why they're so untrusting. The monks knocked on the door of the first house. There was no answer. Then the house went dark. They knocked on a second door and the same thing happened. It happened again and again from one house to the next. These people do not know happiness. They all agreed. But today, said Sue, his face bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. So these people do not know happiness. When we don't know happiness, do we keep other people out? Hmm. And what will stone soup do? They gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. They placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. What are you doing? She asked. We are gathering twigs, said Locke. We are making a fire said Hawk. We are making stone soup and we need three round smooth stones, said Sue. A brave young girl. I wonder why the narrator called her a brave young girl. The little girl helped the monks look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones. Then they put them in the water to cook. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue. But, but this very small pot won't make much, I'm afraid. My mother has a bigger pot, said the girl. The little girl ran home. As she started to take a pot, her mother asked what she was doing. The three strangers are making some soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to know. I'd like to learn how to do that. The, na the monks poked the coals. As smoke drifted up, the neighbors peered out from their windows. The fire and the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. One by one, the people of the village came out to see just what this stone soup was. Interesting. They're being intrigued. Of course, oh, of course, old style stone soup should be well seasoned with salt and pepper, said Hawk. That is true, said Locke, as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones. But we have none. I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. He disappeared and came back with salt and pepper and even a few other spices. Sue took a taste. The last time we had soup stones of this size and color, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said a woman from the back. I may have a few carrots, but just a few. And off she ran. She returned with as many carrots as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. Are you noticing what's happening? Weren't they inside their houses shut with the doors shut and the lights turned off? Do you think it would be better with onions? Asked Hawk. Oh, yes. Maybe an onion would taste good, said a farmer, and he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five big onions and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. Now that's a fine soup, he said. The villagers all nodded their heads as the smell was very agreeable. 
But if only we had some mushrooms, said Sue, rubbing his chin. Several villagers licked their lips. A few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, pea pods, and cabbages. This is one of my favorite pictures. Something magical began to happen among the villagers. As each person opened their heart to give, the next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. Hmm, what's happening? I imagine the emperor would suggest we add dumplings, said one vill villager. And bean curd, said another. What about cloud ear and mug beans and yams, cried some others. And taro root and winter melon and baby corn, cried another villager. Garlic! Ginger root, soy sauce, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried out, and off they ran, returning with all they could carry. The monks stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled, how good it would taste, how giving the villagers had become. This is a pretty exciting event here. Are we noticing anything in the illustrations? I want to go back to this one. At last, the soup was ready. The villagers gathered together. They brought rice and steamed buns. They brought lychee nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea to drink and they lit lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this for as long as anyone could remember. Have you noticed a different perspective? After the banquet, they told stories, sang songs, and celebrated long into the night. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them very comfortable places to sleep. In the gentle spring morning, everyone gathered together near the willows to say farewell. Thank you for having us as your guests, said the monks. You have been most generous. Thank you, said the villagers. With the gifts you have given, we will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And to think, said the monks, to be happy is as simple as making storm soup. Ah, the author does talk about this traditional um, folk tale, or and then it comes from uh, from Europe, so that's interesting. And that there are many different versions of this folk tale, including ones that are traced back to France, Sweden, Russia, England, Belgium, and other countries. In the most familiar versions of the story, the soup is made from stones, but in others, it has been made from nail, an ax, even buttons made of bone. They, there are related stories from Jamaica and Korea and Philippines. It's definitely a different look at it. And the, this, this little bit of author's note is really cool. So you should pick up this book, Stone Soup. It's a good one. I think it's a really special version. And yes, so I want you to be thinking about the point of view like how did you, what events occurred, what big events occurred in the story and how could you tell what the narrator was thinking or what the narrator believed about the people just based on the words the narrator used and the illustrations that the illustrator used. And then how would it be different if the story was told from one of the monks points of view or from your point of view? Something to think about. All right. Tomorrow, we will read a different version of Stone Soup. I'll see you then.